What's up everybody, welcome back. In today's video we're gonna take a look at joining a game in progress and while doing so we're gonna run into a new situation with our replication process and we haven't dealt with that before. So once we get to that I'm gonna try to explain what's happening and how we can deal with it. So before we start the video I'd like to ask you to leave a like if you enjoy the series and if you want to get your hands on the project files you can become a member of the channel or become a Patreon and then you will get access to the downloads for this project as well. So with all of that stuff out of the way let's dive into today's video. So joining a game in progress um, let's start in our shooter game mode so let's open that one up. And uh, first of all, let's go to our event handle starting new player. So in here, I want to make a small change and we're going to do most of the work inside this event, by the way. But um, so at the beginning of this event, we have a check for the is game mode ready and then we update the game state info. So uh, we really only need to do this for the server. So not for every controller that's coming into the game. If the server handles it. Uh, this then we're good to go so what we're gonna do we're gonna add another branch after the first branch over here so let's make a little bit of room and in this branch we're simply going to check if the index of the edit controller is zero so we're going to drag off the add pin over here and compare this so if this is equal to zero we know we are the server so then we're going to use our update game state info function and if not, we're simply gonna continue like we used to. So that's a small change at the beginning of the function. Then I wanna take a look at the event logout. So that's over here on logout. So if a controller gets removed, we uh, decrement the number of expected players. And to make sure that this actually only happens if a player leaves the game and the correct controller, uh, we're going to add a branch over here and simply plug in the condition from the remove pin over here and only continue if this is true. So just a little fail safe to make sure this is working like we expect it to do. Um, so those are two small changes not really related to joining in progress. Now we're going to start setting up the joining and for that we're going to need a new boolean. So first let's add a new variable. And I'm going to call this is game started. So we're going to set this variable right at the end of the event handle starting new player. So let's go all the way to the end. Uh, we can start with the solo branch. So we don't really need this boolean in here, but let's make sure that we keep everything consistent. So if we end up using it later, it's actually in place. So let's just add it over here and make sure that the game is started. So make sure it's true. And then we're going to go to the multiplayer branch. So over here, first of all, we have our team death match where we spawn the players and then start the level. So over here, we also want to add our new boolean and make sure that we set it to true. And if we go a bit further to the right for the other game modes, we're spawning the players over here. And after the last switch on game modes, we also want to make sure that we set our is game started bool. So make sure you plug it in for both of the branches over here and make sure it's true. So with that boolean in place, we can actually tell if the match has started or not. So now we're going to go a little bit back into the function and we have a branch for our is solo game. So we're going to disconnect the pulse pin and right over here we're going to add a new check to check if the game has started. So I'm going to make a little bit of room over here. And grab myself a new branch, plug it in and grab my new variable. So if the game has not started yet we're going to continue like we used to. And if the game actually started, then we only want to spawn the new controller that entered the game. So only this controller and not all of the other connected controllers. So first of all, let's make sure that our number of expected players still matches. So we're going to drag it in and we're going to increment the integer. So plug this one into the true pin of the previous branch. And we're going to continue over here. 
So let me switch my notes quickly. Let me double check. Okay, so I'm back. Um, so after this, we want to grab a branch again, and we want to make sure that our controller is good to go. So we want to check for our is player ready boolean on the controller, and that tells us that the profile is loaded and that the game state and the player state are loaded and everything is good to go. So we're going to drag off the shooter player controller, and over here we can simply get our is player ready bool. So we want to plug it into our branch. And if this is false, we're going to delay until next tick. So we're simply going to wait until it's ready and good to go. And so then we have our controller over here. And we can grab a switch on game mode to make sure that we spawn in the correct way. So let's just grab it over here and we're going to paste it. There we are. So first of all, let's do our endless way free for all and survival game modes. So for that one, we can go a little bit up to the original function. And in here at the end, we're going to grab the for each loop that spawns the actual players. So restart at player start with the find player start and then the game mode with the index. And we actually don't need the for each loop because we're going to spawn one controller. So let's just grab all of these nodes. We're going to copy them and go to our new branch. So over here, we're going to plug in endless wave, free for all and survival. Then we need to link up the controller so we can simply grab it over here where we check if the controller is ready and good to go. And then for the index that we're using for the player start, we can go all the way to the beginning of the function to the add node. And over here, grab the index for the edit controller. So plug it in over there. So this will spawn our new player. And then after that, we need to grab a branch for the game modes again, or a switch, I'm sorry. Paste it over here. And then if we are playing Endless Wave, then all we need to do is update our game state names. So that will make sure that all of the names of the players in the match will be updated so we're going to call updated game state names and for our survival game mode we're going to do the same thing then let's copy this node and paste it over here again so for free for all we're also going to do that but then we want to update our match timer as well so if we go a little bit down so over here we have the level start free for all function and if we scroll a little bit into the function, we check the match duration. And if it's greater than zero, we're updating the, uh, the HUD for the player with the match timer. So we're going to copy this stuff. And go to our new function or event. And then we want to plug this into the free for all branch for the switch on game modes. So if the match duration is greater than zero, that's good to go. Over here, we do need to plug in the controller again, so we can grab it over here. So that's the player controller where we check player ready. Oh, my mouse is freaking out again. So we can simply plug that in to the HUD as well. So this is good to go. Uh, let's make a little bit of room over here. So I'm going to move this event out of the place. So then all we need to do is our team deathmatch spawn. And that's really not too hard either. So we can simply call our respawn after dying function. So we should have that in here somewhere. Oh, that's probably an event. So let's just drag over here and call respawn after dying. So for this one, we also need to plug in the player controller. So we can simply grab that over here. And then after uh, this executed, so the player has spawned, then we also want to call our update game state names. And we also want to update the match timer. So we can simply go to the branch over here and plug it in. And that should make it work. 
And so now in the game mode, we only have one thing left to check. If we go to our respawn pawn for controller, and in here we have a switch on game modes, and you might not have this branch connected for the survival game mode. So make sure that over here the survival is also connected to the normal execution where we grab the character and the model from the uh, saved profile. So make sure this branch is connected as well. Then let's compile and save, and we are done in our game mode. So let's close down our shooter game mode and we're going to go to the characters folder over here. First of all, let's go to our XP component. So we need to make a small change in here. If we go to XP component in it, there we have a cost to our hero base character for the owner of this component. So for the cost field, we're simply going to hook up a delay until next tick and then plug it back into the cost. So this will make sure that our owner is valid when we try to cast it. So compile and save it. And then we're gonna go into our hero base character and go to the event graph. So we're gonna look for our event possessed. And in there we are disabling the input if a player spawns. So event possessed. And in here we can simply check for our new boolean on the game mode to check if the game has started and if the game already started we're not gonna disable the inputs so let's disconnect the false pin for this branch and then we're gonna add another branch plug it in over here and we want to get our game mode so get game mode and then we need to cast it to our shooter game mode so let's make this pure cast to make things a little bit easier and then just drag off here and we're gonna get our new boolean so is game started and then plug it in over here so if the game has started we're not gonna do anything and if it's false we're gonna disable the inputs so hook it up like this and the reason i'm not using my shooter game mode over here from the variables is because this one probably is not set um, so if we uh, we only set this if we take damage because that's the only event that we're using it in so we can't rely on this variable to be valid over here so we're just going to grab it and cast it to make sure that actually works um so now uh, we should basically have it working and we can join a game in progress but we're gonna run into a problem and i'm just gonna run a game and then try to explain what's happening so i'll be back in a sec so i have a team deathmatch game going here and with the third player i'm gonna try and join this game so let's search for the session and then we're gonna see what happens so the joining actually works but then we're gonna run into an issue so there's one pawn over here i cannot see at all that's the server and then over here we have the client but uh, it has the wrong model and the col colors of the character aren't correct either so uh, what's happening over here is that for the new player that joined the game so the black uh, player at the bottom uh, there are new instances created for the blue and the green character but those instances are only created in my game so they already exist for the server and for their owning players so um, what's happening is that it's basically a new instance of those characters and it's not firing all the normal events that you would expect so for example event possessed doesn't fire on this pawn so the green or the blue pawn for my game because uh, the pawn is already possessed by the server and the owning uh, connection of this player also has all of the events already executed so we basically uh, have kind of a problem here because we are not the server and we are also not the owning client but we still need to make sure that this character mesh over here and the other one we can see that they update to the correct meshes and stuff like that so we basically need to make sure that we only run events 
for the instance that is created in our new game. And so that's what we're going to do. And it's not really too hard. So uh, let's get back to our blueprints and then we're going to tackle this. So back in our hero base character. Um, so the solution to this problem is using our event begin play. And uh, we kind of uh, replace that with our own version. So we need to make sure that we grab our normal begin play event. And then if the new instance of that character is created in our game, then begin play will only run on that instance of the character. So then we can simply make sure that inside of the normal begin play event, the model and things like that are updated. But uh, if we did not replace it with our own version, we would still run into some problems because we cannot use a multicast, for example, because the server is not executing this begin play on our instance of the game. So the server cannot run a multicast event because it simply is not executing begin play at the same time as we do. I um, hope that kind of makes sense. So uh, what we want to do, we definitely want to get rid of our multicast begin play. And then we're going to simply grab our normal begin play event. And to make sure that this will actually fire at the moment we want to, we're going to add a boolean. So let's create a new bool. And I'm going to call this is controller ready. So we want to make sure this is a replicated variable. So replication, make sure replicated is set. Then at the beginning of begin play, we're going to grab a branch and we're going to plug in our is controller ready bool. And if it's not ready, you might have guessed it. We're going to delay until next tick. So simply wait, plug it back into the beginning of the branch. And then if this is true, we're going to execute our begin play event. So to make this work, we want to open up our shooter player controller. So let's go to our framework and then the shooter player controller. So in the event grab over here, we also have our multicast begin play. And then at the end, we are calling our server uh, character begin play. So over here, we don't want to call this multicast event because we got rid of it. And we simply want to set our new boolean. So uh, set is controller ready. Plug it in over here. So we do need, need to make sure that the server sets it. So that's why we have the replicated event over here. If we are the server, we're doing it directly. If we are a client, we tell the server to do it for us. This is replicated. So make sure it's true as well. So then if the controller is ready and good to go, so we didn't compile our hero base yet. So compile this one, then go back and compile over here. Um, so now if this bool is set, then we are good to go to execute our begin play. But we want to make some changes to the end over here. So first of all, let me just stretch this out the way it should be. There we go go and so i might want to make a little bit of room so i'm going to grab all of this stuff and move it out of the way for now so inside begin play we have our is server branch and then the server sets the weapon inventory and all of that stuff so this can stay for the grenades that's good to go server setup weapon inventory also good to go but then over here for the server select weapon, we're going to run into an issue because if we call this event, then we're actually calling a multicast event to spawn the weapons on the player's back and to make sure that the animations and all of that stuff is loaded for the clients. So we want to set this up a little bit differently. Uh, for our multicast, we're actually going to create a new event. So we're going to right click custom event and simply call this something like select weapon. Then we can disconnect our multicast stuff and simply move it over to our new event. And make sure that we also plug in the weapon row name over here. Both of them. 
and then we simply want to call this select weapon event from our multicast so select weapon pass on the row name so this will make sure that we can also still use the multicast event if we uh, switch weapons during the game and then if we spawn we can make sure that each client calls this event individually uh, without the server calling the multicast event so this will make sure that the weapon for the characters is updated and that they have the correct weapon uh, spawned on their back so first of all we want to call our server set replicated weapon variables and then we want to call our select weapon event so let's go back to our begin play and over here server select weapon we're going to get rid of this one and then over here we want to uh, call the replicated variables function so server set replicated variables and we want to make sure that we actually plug in our active uh, weapon index so let's grab that from the variables and if we use this, we'll make sure that the newly spawned player also sees the correct weapon and not simply inventory index zero. So the server uh, calls this event and then all the way at the end of begin play, we're gonna call the new select weapon event. And again, for the weapon row name, we want to grab our weapon inventory names and then get a copy and plug in our active weapon index so don't simply use index zero make sure you plug the active weapon index in here and then we can also connect this back to our is server branch so if we're not the server but we are a client then we only want to call the select weapon event something like this so that will kind of make things work, but uh, we still need to add a little bit over here because uh, right now the server is executing way more events than the clients and uh, the client is probably faster executing the select weapon event than the server is. So we need to make sure that the client is going to wait. So we're going to add a new boolean in here and call this something like uh, is server ready. Again, make sure the bool is replicated. So we can add it at the end of the server branch over here. And over here, we're simply going to set it to true. And then for clients, we're going to grab a branch and make sure that we wait until this boolean is actually true. So plug it into the condition and then grab our delay until next tick for the false pin. and loop back to the beginning of the branch so make sure that we plug this in correctly so let me just use a reroute node over here there we go so plug this in right before the select weapon event to make sure that the server actually has the weapon inventory names replicated and that there's actually stuff in these variables for the clients as well okay so i think this part should be good to go and we actually also updated our player controller so uh, we're gonna run a little test again and see if this time it's actually working so again i have a team deathmatch game running two players are busy and i'm gonna join it with the third player so notice for the server I have my rifle selected and it has the pistol holstered. So that should also appear for our new player. So let's just see how everything goes. Let's search a game. And join it. And we spawn at the other side of the level obviously. So let's have a look at our other players. there we go so as you can see right now we're actually seeing the correct character models we can see the correct weapons on the players so the replication part is working right now and we also have all of our names updated on the hut we have our scoreboard updated and if i would check the scoreboard for other players that's also updating 
So pretty much everything is good to go. We have our joining in progress set up and this will also work for other game modes. So in the next episode, we're gonna take a look at the joining a team deathmatch game to make sure that we don't join a team that's already full or a team that's not actually in the game and things like that. So we're not completely done, but for today, uh, we're gonna wrap it up. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider leaving a like and I'll be back soon for more. Talk to you later, guys. Bye bye.